Tutorial 8, Part 3, Phase Transformation. Phase Transformation, New Creation and Growth. All phase transformation has new creation and growth stages. Which, for example, recrystallization and green growth, solidification and solid solid phase transformation. Let's take solidification as an example. First, the nuclei will form in this homogeneous liquid phase. Then, the crystals, the solid crystals, the solid phase crystals will grow around this nuclei. And finally, those nuclei will be the center of those newly formed grains. And also, green boundary will be formed. Homogeneous nucleation. Homogeneous nucleation is defined as apart from the original liquid state and after transformation, the solid state within the nucleus, there is no other state that may facilitate the growth of these newly formed greens. That's what homogeneous means. For, for example, the nucleation of pure water and homogeneous nucleation can be described using the formula here G is the free energy change is described by two terms here the first term the first purple term described the energy necessary to create solid with spherical volume and basically this solid and this one delta G liquid to solid is the energy of formation of the solid per unit volume and definitely this is the volume of the grains of the nucleus and here is the energy necessary to create the surface the interface between the solid and the inter and the liquid and this term gamma s s to l is the surface energy between the liquid phase and the solid phase per unit area and we know that per 4 pi r square is the surface area of our sphere and definitely this reaction must release energy for it to start for the nucleation to start definitely let's say if we take the derivative of this equation we got to r to find the critical radius for the nucleation to go indefinitely then we need to take the derivative and we got the four equation and we set this derivative to be zero and find the r value then we can find the critical radius r critical and this critical radius describes the minimum radius for the nucleation need to be first at in order for the nucleation to freely go it is because at a certain point from zero radius that is no nucleation or no nucleus first the nucleation requires energy and then afterwards it will start releasing energy and which allows the nucleation to be to grow and the r value the critical free energy change the critical r value is here if we put this critical r value into the expression for the free energy change then we get the critical free energy change for nucleation which the which is the minimum energy we need to first input into this system 
for it to denucleate, for it to start nucleate by itself, and which is described here by this vertical line. Using the above discussion, we can explain one phenomena in the physical world, which is the undercooling. Actually, for example, in the solidification of water, energy is first about absorbed before the actual nucleation starts. That means water will first go below zero before the ice can actually form. It is because the water need to absorb the critical free energy required for it to be start nucleate. Then that means there will be a slightly drop of temperature below the melting point of water as shown in the picture here. However, once nucleation starts, energy will be released from the solidification process and temperature is increased back to the melting point, which is also described by this picture. Using the expression defined for the free energy, free energy change from liquid to solid is defined as the enthalpy change of formation of the solid minus the melting point times the delta S, which is the change of entropy. At the melting point, this will be equal to zero. And therefore, we rearrange the term and we get delta S change of entropy is equal to this constant and for temperature below melting point we have this free energy change is equal to this expression and that means at the lower temperature there will be a larger free energy change and a smaller critical energy change. That means a smaller energy required for the nucleation to happen. And that means at a lower temperature, the nucleation will be easier, as shown in the picture here. The nucleation rate is determined by two factors. The first is the number of stable nuclei. And the second is the frequency of atomic attachment to this nucleus. The first term, number of stable nuclei, is determined by the temperature. And at a lower temperature, there will be more number of stable nuclei. And for B, frequency of atomic attachment. For a higher temperature below the melting point, actually, this will be higher. It is because the frequency of atomic attachment is determined also by the diffusion rate. And their respective equation is shown here. And the total nucleation rate is determined by multiplying this term and this term. And here is the expression. And actually, there is an optimal temperature for nucleation by these pictures described. Homogeneous nucleation, as its wording implies, there is a third phase which facilitates the growth of the nucleus apart from the original liquid and the solid phase. And The picture here shows how can we derive the equation for this kind of nucleation. The interface, the surface is the third phase in this system. And by using a surface tension balance and by putting the equations, the respective equations and the respective durations, we got the heterogeneous nucleation 
is equal to a term energy for solidification. It is also the volume term. It is here. And the surface energy term, which is here, and times the theta. The theta is determined by the corner angle. And the corner angle, which is the theta as lambda, is between 0 and 1. And by this way, it implies that the energy requires for heterogeneous nucleation is actually smaller than the homogeneous nucleation. Or heterogeneous nucleation are easier. And also, it needs lower critical free energy change for nucleation than homogeneous counterpart. Heterogeneous nucleation has a higher optimal temperature for nucleation rate than homogeneous counterpart. The first equation here describes the homogeneous nucleation, and the second equation here describes the heterogeneous nucleation. And if we put it together in a same graph, we discovered that the energy, the free energy change required for heterogeneous nucleation are lesser than the free energy required for homogeneous nucleation. And they are read by the equation here. Here is one example why supercooled water must be distilled water. And supercooled water is defined as temperature below the melting point of water. But the water is still in liquid state. And you may see the following link for an such experiment. For water to freeze, it must go through phase transformation which requires nucleation and growth. For pure water, it removes most of the, the impurities, and which is also the heterogeneous nucleation size. To freeze, water must go through homogeneous nucleation, which requires much more activation energy, which is the critical free energy change for nucleation. And that means it requires a much more low temperature for the water to freeze in this case than for a water containing some impurities. Growth rate. After the formation of a nucleus, they will grow and finally they will change to the completely new grains. And the growth is mostly dependent on the diffusion rate because the atoms need to diffuse to the nucleation site for the nucleation site to grow large and larger until they finally become the new grains. And that means the growth rate will increase with an increasing temperature. And to consider the overall transformation rate, it is also multiplied by the nutrition rate and the growth rate. And there is also a, a optimum temperature for the overall transformation rate. Time of transformation. Our means equation. S rate is proportional to 1 over T, and we define the rate using such defini definition. And using the Arami equation, Y is equal to 1 minus e to the power negative kt to the power n. k and n is two time independent constants for the specified reaction. y is the fraction transformed and t is the time elapsed. And we, how can we define the average rate? As we know that at different time, the transformation rate must be different as different fractions of those phases has been transformed. And the average rate we define as the half or the half-life or the time required for the half of the amount to be transformed to be such definition. And the unit, therefore, is defined as the per second for this average rate. 
you can see from the picture here, we define the average rate or T0.5 to be here, and the average rate is just the reciprocal of this number. Time dependence of phase changes, as I just mentioned, there will be a time dependence of phase changes, which cannot be observed from the phase diagrams. Therefore, we introduce a new diagram called the time de temperature transformation diagram, or in short form, TTT diagram, which you have a more detail in part four. Here is an example of this TTT diagram. And one feature for TTT diagram is its x axis is the time axis. It is in logic Fermi scale. 